In this video, we will add client-side validation to our form, making sure that if someone tries to submit it without any value, we will show an error. And even if they just type in random string, we still want to prevent the submission. It needs to be a valid email. And for the client-side validation, we will use React hook form, which is a great way how to use a React hooks to intercept the values of the form validate it and only continue with the submission if everything is valid. Let's go to the getting started guide. And the first thing we'll need to do, of course, we need to install the React hook form. So let's copy the command and stop the server, install React hook forms and restart it. Now we can uh, get the import statement, restart the server again, get the import statement and use the form, use the use form hook inside of our component. So let's import it at the top. Use form can be now used inside of the sign up form component. And we will get, we will destructure this hook and we will get the, the handle submit. Okay. So that's the function that we can run on the form itself. It will intercept the values of the form, validate them. And only after that continue with the submission. Okay, so let's go to the form itself and on submit, we will want to use the handle submit function. And when it's completed, we will specify the actual function we want to run if the form is valid. Okay, so that's the on submit that we need to create. And for now, we will simply just console log the data of the form. We will use arrow function on submit. It will receive the form data and we will just console log them. Okay, so now we have a simple console log if the form is submitted through the React hook form. So let's go to the browser and see if it's working. We should be able to see the console log. Let's go to the input, click a couple times and have a look at the console. We should see the object being printed. Here it is few times on the click. We are sending the data or we are printing the data of the form. And of course, at the moment, the object is empty because we haven't specified any name of this input. So let's first add a name email. That's the name of the input and see if that will change anything. We are submitting it and still the object is empty because we haven't registered this input with the react hook form. So for that, we will need to use ref and pass in the register function that we will get from react hook form. And once we do that, so let's destructure it at the top after the handle submit. Now we are registering this input with this name with react hook form. And if we submit it, we should see the object having the email name, but also still the value is empty because we haven't typed anything in. Inside of the register, we can create a object with the conditions for the validation. The first one is required true, making sure that this input has some value inside of it. And the pattern is including the regex. So if we want to specify valid email, we can copy any validation, any regex validation for valid email. There's plenty of examples out there and I'm just copying one from my notes. Okay. So we are saying this input is required, which means it needs some value and we need to, the pattern needs to match email. Alrighty. So if we submit it now without any value, we don't get the console log. We have invalid value, still no console log. And only if we type in a valid email address, we should see the data object being printed out. Okay, here it is. Data is email and the value of the input. Okay, so that's how we printing it out, preventing unnecessary submissions. And only if it's valid, we are showing the console log. Now we can uh, show the error only when it's needed. So at the moment we're showing it all the time and we want to only show it when the input is invalid. So let's get errors object from the use form. 
and this will change based on which field is invalid and also which of the conditions is invalid. So let's go and conditionally render the error message only when the errors is when the errors object is not empty and if it includes the email. Okay, so this is this relates to the name of the input. We want to make sure if the errors object has email inside of it, then only render this message and we will not hard code the message. We will want to make it specific. So if the errors has email, then print out the correct message. All right, so this will get the message from the input and we can specify it. Instead of saying required true, we will just specify the message we want to print out. So that's for the required. Email is required. And for the pattern, we need to change it to object, copy the value inside of a value and specify a message that will be printed out if we not matching the regex condition. Okay, so please enter a valid email would be our second message. So now we have two specific error messages defined and we are passing it to the error message component to show at the specific time. Okay, so if this works fine, we should see the two messages showing up. Firstly, if we type, if we don't type anything, we see the email is required message that was specified near the required condition. And if we type in anything but not email specific, we get the please enter a valid email. Then if we specify a valid email, we will see the console log as we expect. Okay, so we have nice front end side validation telling the user what's wrong with their input. And now we are ready to take this value, submit the form and hit the API endpoint. Now let's recap what we've done in this video. We've used the React hook form inside of our component. We got the handle submit from it to prevent the submission and only submit it when it's valid. Then we use the register to register our input field. Firstly, we gave it a name, then we registered it. And inside of the register, we specified an object that contains the conditions, how we want to validate this field. The first one is required. And this is the message we want to show the user if it's not met. And then the pattern, we had to make it an object because it has a value and a message as well. Okay, the value is a simple regex that matches a email format and the message is just a simple custom message we want the user to see. Okay, so that's what we did. Then we conditionally render the error message only if the errors object has an email in it and the email is connected to the name of the input. If it is in there, we want to render the error message and pass in the correct message inside of it. Okay, so hope that makes sense and let's continue building the API side of things.